Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's talk about thermal conductivities and R ratings. Whenever heat travels through a medium, such as a metal bar or concrete or brick or glass or anything like that, we use the equation that the amount of heat per unit time passing through is equal to the conductivity constant of the material times the cross-sectional area of the material times the difference in temperature on both sides of the material divided by the path length L. The conductivity constant has units joules per second per meter per centigrade degree. So joules per second is the amount of heat per unit time, which is delta Q delta T. And per meter, that means the length of the path, and per centigrade degree indicates the difference in the temperature on both sides of the, of the object. Here we have some values for different conductivity constants to give you a feel whether or not they readily conduct heat or not. The larger the number, the more easily they conduct heat. Aluminum and copper, being two metals, conduct heat very well, as we probably already know, and you can see by the numbers that's a very large constant. Concrete and glass are much, much smaller. You can see that they're much more resistant to the conductivity of heat. Ice, interestingly enough, is a little bit better at conducting heat than concrete or glass. Rubber is a very good insulator, so once we start getting really small numbers, we think of these as being thermal insulators. Water also is very good at resisting the conductivity of heat, and the only way you can get heat to travel through water is by agitating the water to have the water carry the heat to, from one place to another. If the water is perfectly still, heat will not transfer through the water very well. Wood is a very good insulator. Look at the very tiny number, 0.08. Air is also an excellent insulator, and helium is also good at insulating. Anytime you have a gas, it's a very good insulator. Now, what about R values? When we have building materials, we're interested in how well they resist heat. Here in the United States, R values have, value, have, have units of feet square, Fahrenheit degrees, hours divided by BTU. What the units basically stand for is that for an area of the material that's one square feet in area and the difference in temperature on both sides of the wall of one degree Fahrenheit and over a period of an hour it will translate or it will transfer a BTU. Of course we have the inverse of that which means that the larger the number the more it resists the transfer of heat. So here we have some building materials for example wood one inch wide has an R rating of 0.9 Brick, four inches wide, has an R rating of four. In other words, it resists the transfer heat about four times as much, but then it's, of course, four times as thick. If we compare it inch by inch, wood and brick have about the same resistance to heat traveling through it. Concrete block is not quite as good. It has a smaller R rating, but styrofoam is excellent at resisting heat. Just a one inch thick sheet of styrofoam has a, has a rating of five, which means it's about five times as good as resisting heat flow compared to brick or compared to wood. Of course, styrofoam is not a good material to use in a house unless you want to use it as an insulator. We use fiberglass for that in walls to insulate and notice a three and a half inch thick batting of fiberglass has an R rating of 10.9, which is 3.1 per inch, which is really good. Not quite as good as styrofoam, but it's much better to use as a building material. We also use fiberglass board, which has a slightly better rating per inch than fiberglass batting. And glass has also a very good rating, but typically glass sheets are not very thick. Vertical airspace, if you use air instead of fiberglass, notice you're bringing it down from 10.9 down to 1.0. So you can see that it's much better to insulate the house with fiberglass than to just rely on the airspace in between the inside and outside walls. Drywall adds about a 0.45, and stagnant air layers on either side of the wall also add some additional insulating capability. But notice, that's what we mean by the R ratings. Now, if you want to convert the R ratings to metric units, where the units are rated per square meter, per watts and per centigrade degree, we have to multiply these ratings by 0.1761 to convert to the metric type of R rating units. So that gives you kind of a feel for heat conductivity and resistance to heat flow in the, in the terms of R ratings, in case you were interested. That's what it is.